the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Please welcome Yuri Tjorkev. What a great pleasure it is to have you here, Yuri. And we saw some lovely images, and I could see your mind going back in time 24 years ago. You did something that every single person who plays football, has been involved in football, wants to do. You lifted the FIFA World Cup trophy. And those images are some of those moments, like the corner to Zidane, still fresh in your memory. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, first, uh... Uh, hello everybody. Uh, before to start talking about, of course, uh, the grand, uh, the, world cup, the, the final, the, everything that, uh, that we can describe it. Uh, there was a, a very interesting goal. I don't know if you, if you watch all the goal. There's one with my shirt, Ice Monaco, you know, uh, when I was playing at, at, uh, at Monaco. This game it was against Marty. And I was running with the ball, and I was running with the ball, and I heard someone saying, pass the ball, pass the ball, give the ball. I said, who was, who was talking to me? It was my coach, Arsene Wenger, <laughs> asking me to, to pass to a different player. But he knew at the end that I will score, you know? <laughs> I, sometimes he was yelling after me, but today I'm, I'm happy, but uh, I'm close to him, I'm working very closely to him. And, and Matt uh, Arsene is in charge of the, of the global football at FIFA. It, it's fantastic. It's lovely to see that relationship. Yes. I saw it when I walked in. It, like it was not the same in the locker room, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but being as you brought it up, what influence did Arsene Wenger have on your football at Monaco? To make me red. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Arsen, not, not easy. No, no, uh, what, what he bring it up to me, and I think what he bring to to football is is that um, a game. It's a long journey. A game. It's a long journey, and um, you you have to use it all, all your quality and your default to uh, to be uh, to succeed. It is not just about uh, quality. And I remember because at this time I was one of the toughest scorer in, uh, in France. And it, it was more working on my default, on my, what I have to adjust it. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, it bring me at different stage about uh, uh, thinking about uh, a global, about the football. What is a player, what, what the player have to do every day to, to be, uh, to be better, and uh, and uh, this is, uh, the, I think, the quality of of, uh, of Arsene Wenger is is to, uh, to to put you at your best. And joking aside, you saying he made me run in Monaco. He went from Monaco then to Paris Saint Germain. Paris Saint Germain. Yes. Were you the fittest, fastest man in Paris Saint Germain when you arrived? Were you a better player when you arrived? In France, not in person. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I, I mean, I mean, when uh, I'm starting very, very young, um, and you know, when you have one one quality at uh, at 15, 16, um, your coach don't or does don't need to ask you to do uh, things that you don't need to do. They are just waiting for you to score the final goal to to deliver the good uh, the good passage. Pass and uh, and uh, and from 15, uh, starting to play 16 second division, 
At 18, I was captain of my team, Grenoble, in second division. When I moved to uh, Monaco, I was 21. I already five years playing in second division. Five years to be uh, one of the uh, uh, youngest talented. Uh, but when I arrived with uh, Arsene in Monaco, I have to uh, work uh, and do my basic. And this was difficult, but, uh, but it was good because uh, we never fight. We, he always teach me in a good way. I always learn it and, and listen. I think it was important for me to listen. And you carried on listening and it took you to the pinnacle, yeah. as we saw there, of winning the FIFA World Cup. And getting back to those images, it's yes. like you, you do it, you, I can see the smile on your face. You see them, are they still fresh? In your memory every morning every night every morning you wake up as a world cup winner and uh, and you sleep uh, uh, with uh, this uh, amazing dream to uh, to to touch the world cup and you know i think i'm uh, i'm 50 54 i'm born in 68 my first images of the world cup was 74. Uh, what i remember about 74 it was all the the ceremony inauguration with all this wall opening and the wall, you know, with 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 the show, and after we have '78 with all the paper in Argentina, you know, and all the time this guy carrying the World Cup and uh, and, and all the teammates around him, and uh, and uh, I did something when I was 12. Uh, I did a essay, a redaction essay. And I, I write it when I was at school and say, one day I will, I will become professional, and one day I will play for the World Cup, and we will win the World Cup, and after I will play in the US, you know? And um, when I won the World Cup, I was 30. Uh, and uh, I think it was a good age to win the World Cup because you already achieved many things in your life, and, and uh, it's a growl. And uh, the day when I won, the week after, I received a letter, and it was my redaction, it was my essay, keep it from my teacher when I was 12, and she sent it to, to, to me and she said, I felt something in your determination to achieve what you did. And, uh, and the World Cup is not just, uh, it's not for, for us, for players, and for a country, it's not just a, a single tournament for one month. It's a, it's, a, it's a life achievement. It, it's starting by a dream. It's still a dream. But what I like uh, watching these images is realizing the, the work that you did before. Realizing all the session, uh, difficult moments that we had on field, on training. Every details that you bring you at this level. This, for me, is the best. You know, I have the cup, uh, the replica in my place, and I was not sure to put it in the vitrine. I say, okay, every day, you know, I'm here. Why I will put in a vitrine? And uh, and after I say, yes, I should. I sh the World Cup should have a special place because every time I'm watching the, uh, the cup, I'm thinking about my teammate, my coach, uh, my tough time in, uh, in some club, my good time, uh, my, my worry, my uh, uh, thought about uh, to one day I will uh, be uh, able to, uh, to play national team or, or many things that at the end is good to remember because it keeps you, you, your feet on the ground. It's such a lovely story that, and you say it's more than just for the teams and the coaches and the players, there will be millions of 12-year-olds in 47 days' time yes. doing exactly yeah. what you did. Yes, and I, um, this is the beauty of, of, of football. Uh, we grew up with uh, 82, 86 generation. Michel, Platini, Giray, Stigana, Le Carré Magique, and, and we really suffer it to, uh, to have this failure all the time at, in some final. But we grew up with this hunger to, uh, to, not to do better, we don't want to do better, but to do more. 
and uh, and uh, in '96 we played the Euro, and uh, we were not we were not ready to win. We didn't have in France uh, coaches uh, or even organization to prepare us to win a major tournament. It was just uh, let's let's prepare to play. You know, and today is different. Is let's prepare to win. This is a big difference, and uh, and we did it in '98. We won the World Cup in 2000, the, the Euro. But in the meantime, we create a new generation. Uh, all these young players who won the World Cup in 2018, they grow up watching us play, and I think this is this is very important because now, in the DNA of uh, of the French player, uh, we got the victory. So it is just around the corner. We keep mentioning 47 days away now until it starts here in Qatar. How, how, how do you feel? Now you're involved with FIFA now, yeah. but now you're not a player, you're not a coach, but you're, you're still about to experience something very I'm special. I'm a fan. You're, you're a fan? I'm a fan, of course. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel it will play out here in Qatar? Very exciting. I mean, like, like everybody, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I want to to start, you know. I want I want to be at the first game and, and to to let to let football speaking because today there's so many things around around this World Cup. Uh, but it's normal because the attention of the world will be uh, will be on the 32 team and uh, and uh, and there's a lot of expectation. But I think what what we should keep it in mind and. and and talking to the people about what is the most important, it's a football tournament. It's a football tournament. And we should speak about football, and, uh, and, uh, and, I, uh, and I wish that the first game is starting to speak about football. That leads us nicely then to what standard of football you expect to see, based on the fact that it's a mid-season tournament. Mm. Players are not as mentally and physically tired. We're mid-season. What are we expecting? What are you expecting as the fan? As a fan, a tough tournament. Um, quality of uh, quality of the player, quality of the top player will be uh, at the maximum. Uh, quality of, uh, of uh, preparation, uh, physical preparation, quality of, uh, of every, every detail. And, and I think uh, this is really important. Uh, there's no, there's no supremacy. I was watching Brazil, uh, Tunisia. Yes, Brazil was amazing. But you know, as soon as the tournament starting, it's a different story. And uh, in the meantime, all all the team they don't have so much time for the preparation. And I want to say something about preparation. Preparation is good and bad. Most of the time you losing player during the preparation because the pressure starting to be growing, growing, growing and, and, and you have some good player from club or from Europe who joins the national team and during the preparation you losing this player and you can feel it. As a player inside the, inside the group you feel it that the player who are the top scorer or the best player in this club when, when the preparation for the World Cup is arriving, is totally different. And in the meantime, for coaches and for the players, you don't have so many time to prepare it for a long ride, because the World Cup is a long ride. So you're the fan now. What if you were the player now, and there'd be players in this tournament playing in their first mm. World Cup, some playing in maybe their second, or even third? What would you be thinking of? this moment, this close to a FIFA World Cup, as a player? I will, I will be honest, <laughs> I will not think. Is I'm waiting all my life to play a tournament like this. Uh, I will thinking about nothing, just, just, just to play. You know, I will not, I will be ready, I will be, I will not thinking, I am ready, I'm not ready, I am fit, I'm not fit, no, yes, of course, I will be all, all these things, because, because the World Cup is not, uh, is, 
it's not just arriving. You know. I know where where he's starting. You know, starting from a long time, and, uh, and I will be ready to be at the at the moment, uh, fit and uh, in a good good uh, mental uh, mental uh, uh, positive. It's tougher though these days, isn't it? With so much social media, and you're seeing it. A lot of the players now, of course, are still taking part in their own domestic leagues. Mm. The, yes. is, is that helpful to them as they prepare for the World Cup? For some, yes. For, uh, I mean, uh, if, if I can... Uh, I was watching Neymar playing for PSG <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Brazil. He's on the top of, uh, of his form, and, uh, like he was not before. And uh, I think this, this is good for him. And I think most of the players are understanding that uh, this is a special World Cup. It's coming in a... In a, in a the middle of the season, but uh, they all already. You can you can watching all the top players. They, they're ready to, uh, to 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 make it a special World Cup. It's interesting you say that because Emmanuel Pérez in the round table chat just before was talking about uh, with, with with the different um, head head of performance and things on the preparation of the player and certainly maybe a more advanced player, an older player. How and when you use them, how you recover them for the tournament. This is a. It will be maybe a. a we, we're talking about star and we're talking about a team, but it will be a, as well a, a World Cup for our coaches uh, because uh, for the first time they don't. They were expecting, of course, coaches expecting more time with the, with the team, more time to build the team, more, 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 but. In this occasion, they will not have all the all the things that they are expecting. But the coaches, it will be really important. Should I bring 26 players? Should I bring 23? Uh, what what kind of team uh, I will present it for the first game, for the second game? You know, it's very short. It and more more game you play, the more tough he is on. The pressure more tough is it on inside the group? You know the group is starting to to have pressure between players as well. You know, and, and I think what is will be important is not just the coaches because we realized during the Euro in uh, 2020, 21, we realized that the coaches and the staff uh, become very important. Forgive me for being a little bit selfish, but you know, being Welsh. Yes. You know, we are in the World Cup for the first time in 64 years. It's the first time I brought this. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it feels great that it hasn't started yet. But I was listening to Tony earlier, and of course, one of our star players is, is Gareth Bale. And okay, maybe he's not the Gareth Bale five years ago, but he's still an exceptional player. Will coaches, will Rob Page look at a player like that? Does he start a player like that? Do you start with your best player? Or do you bring him on as a as Jill Ellis said, the game changer. The most important is the first game. The first game of the tournament is the most important. You can do whatever you want is to win the first game. Even if it's to play like crap. <laughs> it's the worst game ever. You must win the first game. And uh, the first game gives you the, the rhythm tempo, the confidence to, uh, to make some change on the second game and to give it uh, the push for, uh, for the tournament. So that is your experience as well? Yes. The emphasis on win at all costs, yes. just win the game? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, uh, I had the privilege and the chance to have two World Cup, one 98 and one 2002, two different World Cups. <laughs> One we won, and the one, the second one we we left after uh, after three games. We were scoring one goal and winning in the winning one goal, one one uh, one game. But I realized that is not uh, it was normal because the preparation on the second tournament in 2002 was really bad, and uh, and we starting very badly against opening game against Senegal. And after, uh, the dynamic of the, of the team was not here anymore. Uh, 
very different from the tournaments, the two you played in, of course, is this is a compact World Cup. So if you do win the first game, you maybe don't have to travel so far. Well, you won't be having to travel because everything is so close. Will this be beneficial? Will it create more pressure? Good pressure. Good pressure because you will feel it uh, crowd of the different fans around your area. Uh, you will see uh, the reality of a, of a tournament. You know? You're not outside and living in a in a bubble. And uh, and uh, sometimes living in a bubble is good, but you're losing some kind of reality <laughs> that is a World Cup. A World Cup is. A, is a is a difficult exercise where you should you should take care of everything. You know, the the bad crowd, the good crowd, the pressure of the media because we have it, uh, the pressure of your team, and uh, and uh, and I think it's as a player you're not here to think about location, hotel. Big, big room, room service, whatever. You're here to play, and and you have to focus on that. Don't 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 lose your energy on, on different topic. Just be focused on playing. Which which adversary, which team are going to play next game? It's interesting because you won the World Cup in France, uh, home soil, Qatar. You're about to play. On home soil, it's their first World Cup. Mm -hmm. and you're talking about the impact of the supporters, the fans, on the home team, the home nation. A good pressure and a bad pressure. In '98, we had the bad pressure from the journalists and the good pressure from the from the fans. But you know, it's we're lucky in football business because every three days we play. Every three days we have a different game and it could be a disaster game and the bad pressure is coming. The three days after you play very well and uh, suddenly and, uh, you become uh, the hero. I think for Qatar it will be um, a fantastic experience because first time they host it. In, uh, in, uh, first time in the, the Middle East and Peninsula Arabic, uh, a major uh, tournament in football. And, uh, they have nothing to lose. And they play against Ecuador, and uh, it will be a very interesting game. And uh, and, uh, and Qatar, uh, they should only play, 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 play. Give enthusiasm. People will they will follow you. And it's a unique opportunity. What Qatar have done, of course, is to come together as a group and prepare specifically for a tournament. The yes. Yes. Is this something? We don't know. Will it work? 